Andy Samberg no falla nunca y Palm Springs es la prueba de ello, una correcta película que mezcla comedia con loops temporales y fue de lo mejorcito que nos dejó el año pasado. Hablé con su guionista, con Andy Ciara, sobre cómo fue el proceso creativo y cómo fue que se fue puliendo esta película que, si no sabían, tuvo varios finales, no solo escritos, sino también rodados y que fueron probados con amigos y familiares que le dijeron va por acá, va por allá, hasta lograr conseguir esa película que terminamos viendo. Todo en este informe sobre Palm Springs. We now return to Mira Akien and Contre with our latest interview. It's less about how long he's been in the time loop, but it's and then more about that he's lived a long life in there and he has felt, like the, one of the first lines that I'd ever, I, I wrote for him was, uh, I felt everything I'll ever feel, so now I'll never feel ever again. I don't think that we met. I'm Sarah. Niles. Hi. Hi. It, it was never initially a, a time loop wedding rom-com. It, it actually started a five, six years ago. Max, the director, and I, we, we went to film school together. We met the, the first day at uh, AFI, the American Film Institute. Um, back in 2013 and we made a bunch of short films together and we just like just a really great friendship and creative partnership and then when we graduated in 2015 we we're like let's do our first movie together I'll write it you direct it let's come up with the idea together and so he and I went out to Palm Springs um, for a weekend and just like just talked about everything talked about life uh, existential angst and commitment and love and I, I was on I was you know, a, a few months later, I'd be, I was about to get married. Um, so I was like a lot of like my feelings around that. And, uh, and out of that weekend, um, we pretty much just had the idea of like, I guess, or a challenge almost of, can, can we take, we have a, a, the seeds of this character of Niles and can we take this character on a journey from caring about nothing to finding a reason to care? Like, is there a reason to care? Here you are, standing on the precipice of something so much bigger than anyone here. But always remember, you are not alone. And I think I think weddings have this unique way of uh, they can they bring out the best and worst in people. <laughs> um, I've seen so many like long relationships and loves form at weddings, and I've seen so many friendships crumble at a wedding. Um, and that they're just and so once it was kind of after my wedding where we realized like. Yeah, this is a great setting to, uh, for a character like this, uh, a character who cares about nothing. You put, trap them in a place where um, people maybe care about the uh, everything, the more the things that don't really matter as much, uh, they care too much about those things, such as like, you know, what the color scheme is or what the, the floral arrangement is going to be, yeah. the things that don't really have a bearing on, on like on, on life. The core of this is like, it's a, it's a love story. It's like, if, if life is meaningless, I'm not saying it is, But if, if it is, we might as well go through it with somebody. We might as well like have a buddy. It's every, everything is, is more fun when you have someone to lean on. And like, and it's also not, a, not an original thought either. It's like countless songs and movies have been built around that idea. Like we all need someone to lean on. So, uh, and that's really what the heart of the movie is. Is like these two people are lost souls that find each other and realize, yeah, this, it's, this shit's better to go through uh, with somebody. Andy had read it and loved it and we met with him and they wanted to do it. So then we, for another three months or so, we just developed it further. Um, like worked on a lot of stuff that was in like the third act kind of like the, in the ending, but like then just to tweak, tweak things throughout, but just, you know, just focus the story. And like, and to be honest, when I remember when Max and I first went over to their office, uh, the, the Lonely Island uh, party over here office, And just sitting, sitting down with them that first day to like walk through the script with them. Like, I just felt, I mean, we, we did not know the movie was for sure going to happen at that point. We're just like, we felt like the two luckiest guys to, to just spend time in that room. because those are like, they're comic geniuses. They, they, I, 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 I would just, I felt like I was just learning so much uh, simply being there. And I'm like, and in that, in that process, they like I was just learning more about story learning about what is needed what is not needed and so there was a lot of like crafting throughout all that um and then I would I would take all the notes and go off and write and come back 
And then, so once we got like all that kind of, I don't know, we, we, we chiseled the script down to like the essential beats throughout all that. We're also working on Andy's uh, like any lines that just are need to be tweaked to kind of fit him more than they might initially then like, yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I through, throughout the entire thing, like he and I were kind of always in constant communication about just like, eh, how can we make it better? We, we there's, I think even to the very end and to like, and to editing it all, like you can always top something like yeah. we, 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 we never wanted anything to just be, uh, to be fine. We, uh, uh, if anything, if we always felt like, yeah, that's fine. Like, no, that's not good enough. Then let's, let's, let's make it better. And, and I think that's where I, I leaned on him and, um, and Akiva and then, and Becky Sloboder a lot, uh, because yeah, they're, they, they know more than me. I think once you have a movie with a time loop, you can do, and you ended with dinosaurs. Where did you draw the line the, the, of the absurdity? In? The one limit we were trying to give ourselves was that we wanted to be able to do this. We wanted to aim for a, a, a really small budget, like, you know, one or a few locations in the desert. So there was like, there's the dream part of us that we could go make this, but we never were like writing a movie that would be a, a $50 million movie. It was always intended to be like, you know, a very, very low budget movie. Yeah. Um, and so there's that limitation, but with, within that, uh, I think this is, this is the, the, benefit of our naivete where we were like because no one said oh no you you can't you shouldn't have you shouldn't be like looking to dumb and dumber and saving private ryan and the great beauty um and ace ventura when nature calls and looney tunes um and inside lewin davis and patterson like you know pick a lane uh i think because no one was saying don't pick a lane um no because we didn't have to answer to anybody we were just like we love all those movies <laughs> and we want to like we had we had very clear references to every single one of those plus more it was always like throwing all of these these inspirations into this like this this stew that we'd always pull from and so like that it's that in and of itself i think lends it lends itself to an absurdity <laughs> when we took this movie out um to try to find some people to like finance it a lot of people were like Yeah, but I don't, but but you can't be all those things. You you can't like it's all the stuff that we ex expected. And then like now the people who have money, uh, they're like, no, you can't be all those things. But then luckily we found um, partners that were like, no, like you can you can totally be all those things and more. Like uh, and I remember you know and Andy, one of his first pitches was like, yeah, let's let's uh, have Sarah walk into the cave strapped with C4, um, or uh, or let's like put a bomb in the cake, um, like all that kind of stuff was that's why we knew that it was like it was the right marriage with them because they saw like is it the, all the references that we have like you know we all love the same movies and you know I, I didn't want to throw like eternal sunshine and punch drunk love into that mix too um and we, we all love the same things and so like rather than being scared of that like that's what those guys are so good at they're like no lean into that i have no interest in this emptiness You know, the who, what, why of your past. You got here, that's all that matters. The, the ending was always like, that there's, there's an ending that's in the script that is some version of the ending that's there. It's kind of like a longer conversation um, that points more to like the fact that we're not going to give you a definitive answer that it kind of explains it a little more. So it's, it's like, it's better that that was cut. Um, but the, the, all the endings that we shot, there were all variations on that. There were like, we add, add a little add a little something here, add a little something there, but it was all meant to like, with there, there's the, Andy Samberg has talked about like the different parts of the movie that we wanted to make sure like we are hitting like the, the, the genre of the movie. There's like the, the, the romantic comedy version uh, thing we wanted to hit of the movie of like, yeah, these two are together, happy. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's the, the sci-fi version of the movie of like, well, we need to, there's, you know, there's kind of need to answer that in some way. And then there's like still the, the existential kind of, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the existential comedy drama version or uh, uh, genre that like, uh, that I think lends itself to more of this question mark. So we wanted to make sure we, we hit all of those marks along the way. 
um, in the in that ending. And I think that like in showing these various versions to some family and friends and to these other screenings, like it was really just about calibrating like what is what where is it not leaning too far into like a very clear answer that they got out or a very clear answer that that no they did not get out. Um, I have my own takeaway of like what what happened. Um, and but that might be the same, might be different than um, than Sandberg and Chris Miliotti and, and Becky, our producer, and Max. Like we all have kind of our own t our own interpretation, which I think that's that's some that's a part of it too, because it's like the movie is not ours anymore. The movie's the movie is just as much yours as, as as it is mine now. And so whatever you feel at the ending, um, whatever you're taking away is is just as valid as whatever. Uh, I had intended it to be, or Max had intended it to be, or, um, but as, but we, we, so therefore that's why we always wanted it to be like fall somewhere in the middle of those two, like the definitive answer one way, definitive yeah. answer the other way. Let, let's, the, the, the most important thing to me uh, was, and then, and what was in the very first draft um, uh, was that they are at the pool like they're ending together at the pool and that the very last shot has dinosaurs in it. Um, that, that was a, that was, that was something that I, uh, everything else that comes in between that, that's kind of what we like, we, we tested and stuff, but like the dinosaurs as, as the very last frame, that's a, the last line in the script and the last line, and always wanted to be a, yeah. be in that last Why, shot. why dinosaurs? Oh my God. Do you see them too? Are they real? Who cares? On the one side, that scene where they first see dinosaurs um, in the, the campfire, uh, you know, it's, it's a moment where you have these two characters who don't feel like they can love or be loved. Uh, that is a, and that's a, that's an, an impossible task, an impossible feeling to hit, um, to to, to see or to be seen. Um, and in that moment, my hope was that like, not that that's where they actually realize like, oh, but I, maybe I can, maybe I am feeling those feelings here. And uh, so it's an impossible thing to these characters. So they then therefore share in seeing the impossible, uh, which are dinosaurs on the horizon. It could be that. I'm not saying it is that, but like, uh, what a, what also, equation. yeah, it also could just be because like Jurassic Park is my favorite movie of all time. And, uh, and when I, when I was writing that scene, I was like, I, after, that took a long time to figure out, like I, that was a such an important scene of them. The two characters realizing that maybe they've been seeing the world a little different, like wrong in a way, like where Niles like is so much about being in the present where the past doesn't matter. And she's like, no, it, it, every, it's, you need a full, the full package. Uh, and so he's like starting to come over to this side. And, um, and also like, you know, he says he doesn't care about anything, but she catches him in a moment of like, no, you, ca you clearly care. Like she care he cares about her. Um, and it's this moment of like kind of, yeah, togetherness. And I remember after it, it took a while to, to write that, but I remember once I got it and I was like, it works, but it's not good enough. How can we make it better? And it just seemed like, what if they just see dinosaurs on the horizon? <laughs> and that's, it, it just feels, it just makes makes things better. Um, but it also like, it could be a, a rift in the space time continuum, so. Yeah, who, who knows? Again, yeah. it's, it's up to the audience in, in, in this case. Uh, yeah. When the movie was released, we were in quarantine, like, living the same day over and over again. How do you feel about that context for your movie? I mean, it's, it's strange to be honest. Uh, obviously we never could have foreseen that. Good day so far? Today, tomorrow, it's all the same. You, what is going on? Hey, get out of the water, girl! I saw that movie Patterson. I don't know if you've seen Patterson, um, yeah, the Jim Jarmusch. I love it. Like, yeah. And that, that was also a huge influence on the movie. Like Max and I saw it around that same time. And like, that's not a time loop movie, but it's still like every day just kind of feels the same for him. Yeah. It's just, it's, and that's kind of just how life feels. And that was a part of like, that was another reason to do the time loop is it's kind of just how life feels. The second you fall asleep, it all just goes back to the start. 
One time I smoked a bunch of crystal and made it all the way to Equatorial Guinea. It was a huge waste of time. The, the reason it was the time that that's kind of how life somewhat feels. I think the fact that like this came out during a time when like we, we, are, we no longer can like turn it off. Cause I, th I think all of our lives are, we, they kind of are somewhat like that. And there are things that we do to us to escape it, whether just, you know, simply just going out to concerts or seeing movies and theaters and like just being social. Um, but still a lot of our lives are like that. And now like, because we are, we're forced to, to sit with it and face it and, and live in it um, under this, like, it's like a, a, a bit like a very intense, microscope almost i think that's like and, the, and i think that's what that's the, the, the wow the movie somehow like i don't know worked with that because I, I i was my hope would be the movie would work regardless outside of this but like because now 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 people are having to see it and experience it in real time rather than like it being this thing that opens their eyes They're like oh maybe that's what my life is like and now it's like oh no that's what my life is like because i'm doing this every day Stand back!